Hello, my name is Frank Sackenheim and you're watching the Astro Photocast. In this episode, I'd like to show you a new piece of software. It's called Gregspert and Gregspert was written to remove gradients from deep sky images. Everything you need to know about Gregspert follows after the intro. See you then. First things first, I'm not a native English speaker, so I try to do my very best to make this presentation as understandable as possible. And if you don't understand it, I apologize for it. As I said in the introduction, I'd like to present a new piece of software to you. It's called Gregspert, and Gregspert is a software that can remove gradients from deep sky images. The idea was born on our Discord channel Dark Matters. A couple of months ago, I was talking about the idea of writing a software that can remove gradients from deep sky images. Within a few days, Stefan, David and Christian found three algorithms that were suitable for our purposes. And just three months later or so, we are now able to show you the final product, the software Gregspert. My big thanks to Christian, David and Stefan again and to the whole crowd on our Discord channel Dark Matters for supporting us and for beta testing, of course. If you are now saying what you're doing so nice things on your Discord channel, you can always join us on Discord and you will find a link in the description below this video. What are gradients and why should they be removed from astrophotos? As the name suggests, gradients are gradual changes in brightness that are not part of the astrophoto but are caused by external interferences. This can happen due to light pollution, different brightness of the night sky, air glow, but also missing or faulty flat correction. It is important to remove such gradients. This does not only look better, but also makes image editing much easier. There are various paid softwares that can do this very well, such as the DBE in PixInsight or the AstroPixel processor software. And you can also buy plugins for, let's say, Adobe Photoshop or Affinity Photo that do the job. However, Gregspert is freely available open source software that was programmed exclusively for this purpose. It works standalone, independently, and not as a plugin for any other software. There are two ways to download Gregspert. First, you can have a look on our webpage on www.gregspert.com. There you will find right on the start page three buttons for downloading for Windows operating systems, Mac OS and for Linux systems. You can also browse our webpage and find some additional informations and you will find some contact informations on the bottom of the page. Below the video you will also find a link to our GitHub repository and you can of course download the software directly from GitHub. After downloading the software you will find it in your download folder and you can start it by simply double click on it. This is the Gregspert user interface. Here on the left side you will find a few points that we will go through one after the other various buttons and sliders that we will use in a moment. Here at the top left you will find the version number and a version name. Here on the right side there is a collapsible help menu and here is a quick guide for the impatient. But I'll now walk you through each point in detail. It is important to mention that you should ideally carry out the gradient removal on linear images. That means right after stacking, even before you do a histogram transformation. This is what we call linear images. You can also use Gregspert to remove gradients on non-linear images, but as I said, I would recommend doing this immediately after stacking before the histogram transformation. So here's point one. You load the image into the software using this button. You can load FITS or TIFF or JPEG or PNG and 60-bit or 32-bit floating point. Both are possible. 
Linear images are always displayed very darkly. Only the brightest stars can be seen here. In order to be able to see anything at all, you have to press the stretch options button once under point 2. The basic setting for the first use is no stretch. You can stretch your images to different degrees and I recommend you select the highest level for the gradient removal. Even if the image seems very unfamiliar, we can see the gradients best in this view. For example, here at the top right or bottom left of the image. Incidentally, Gregspert remembers which settings you have used at last. So the next time you open the software, the last used value will be used. This is important because it could be the case that you want to edit a nonlinear image next. And then of course you have to reset this button to no stretch. We now need to tell Gregspert where the sky background exists in the image. So, no stars, no nebulae or galaxies, just a simple plain background. To do this, we can simply click with the mouse in those areas that contain only the sky background. And then we set a small red box there, a so-called sample point. You can move these samples by holding down the mouse left button or delete them again with a right click. It would now be very unpractical to pave the whole picture with such samples by hand. That's why there's point 3, Sample Selection. This allows you to automatically create a grid of samples across the entire image. With the first slider we can specify how many such samples should be set per row. I would not necessarily recommend selecting the maximum number of samples here, especially since more samples also mean longer computing time. I'll do that now and we'll see what happens. Samples have now been created over the entire image, but you can also see that, for example, no samples were set at the top right and bottom left where the strongest gradients are. We can influence this with the tolerance slider. If you choose a high tolerance, then Gregspert is more selective in which areas of the image samples are set and if you choose a low tolerance, it can happen that samples end up on the objects. So you have to find a sweet spot here. My approach to this image would be to select a high tolerance and then simply move or delete the samples that land on the object. Something just happened here by mistake. I didn't hit the sample point correctly with the mouse. So with the left mouse button you can also move the whole picture. And with the mouse wheel you can, for example, zoom in and out in the picture to set the sample a little more precisely. Now that all the samples are set we choose an interpolation method. In point 4 we have three methods to choose from. RBF is the default setting and RBF leads to very good results. It's my personal favorite but takes a while to calculate. Splines on the other hand is a very simple method well suited for very simple gradients such as a simple brightness gradient from say left to right. The advantage splines is quite fast. Krieging is the method that should lead to the most accurate results, at least according to some scientific papers. But it is very computationally intensive, especially when setting many sample points. Then the calculation can sometimes take a few minutes. Finally, there is the smoothing factor slider, which tells us how hard or soft the transition between two samples should be calculated. First of all, set it to 0.5 and try from there with higher or lower values. Now all I have to do is hit the Calculate Background button and let's take a look at the result. After some computing time we now have the result and as you can see the gradients have almost completely disappeared. Up here with this tab you can now look at the result and blink back and forth between the versions. You can also only look at the gradient model itself, which is also helpful to be able to judge how successful the gradient removal was. If you are satisfied with the result, you can save the picture under the last point. 
it is important to understand that the image is again saved as a linear image. So you have to do the actual histogram transformation in another software, Gregspert cannot do that. Here you can choose the format in which you want to save the image. Since I have loaded a 32-bit fits, I will save my image as a 32-bit fits again. If you like, you can also save the background model separately. This may be useful if you want to do the actual subtraction in another software such as PixInsight. It has the advantage that your image history is not interrupted there. With Save Processed, the processed image is saved with the extension Gregspert. I'm not doing that now because I have done that countless times before. Here's another example of the Orion Nebula M42. You can see gradients on the bottom left, bottom right and top right. Alnitak has also left its mark again. But you can also see that there are so many delicate dark nebula in the picture that it's very difficult to set any samples at all. If I lower the grid tolerance, I would get samples all over the place, but they would all be on top of the nebula. So I press reset sample points. The only possible way is to set a few samples by hand. My strategy is to put samples into the very dark areas, but also into the obvious gradients, so that both samples are always balanced. I'll hit calculate background again and we will see what happens. You can see the gradients are gone and it is often the case that you can now see better the actual background in the image and where there may be faint nebula. You can then reset, delete or move or remove or set new samples again and trigger the gradient removal again. It is important to know that the calculation now starts from scratch with the newly set samples, so there is no calculation based on the first pass. In this way, you can approach an ideal calculation. We are very curious about you, get along with the software and what results it achieves for you. I have to say that the software has far exceeded my expectations and the feedback on Discord has been consistently positive. Nevertheless, errors can occur, especially on computers with Mac operating systems. If you are a programmer working with Apple computers and you are interested and want to help us, please contact us. You can contact us in many ways. For example, you can simply come to our Discord server, which is also the place to be for support requests. Of course, you can also write me, for example, on Facebook or you can contact me by email. All those informations are provided as well on our website www.gregspert.com. If problems or errors occur with the software, it is important that you describe these problems as precisely as possible. So you shouldn't just say, hey, that doesn't work for me, or the download doesn't work, or something that way. So please describe the problem as precisely as possible, but don't write any novels. Just try to describe the problem briefly and concisely, but still exactly. If an error message appears, you will see it in the so-called terminal. This is the smaller window that opens with the program. You can simply click in this terminal and select everything with Ctrl A and copy it with Ctrl C. Then paste it into an email, for example, with Ctrl V. So I hope you enjoyed the video and the software. And if you would like to stay in contact with us, join us on our Discord server. Everything you need to know about Gregsburg about our Discord community, you will find on our webpage, which is called www.gregspert.com. It's, of course, linked below the video. Until then, see you next time. Bye-bye.